very, very used to the top 22. We finally have these lists in. Um, Shall we take a look? Oh, nice. So Stefan is playing Zorak. And we have a buzzword yeah. from Tord, uh, giving up on Zoroark here, Tord. Uh, very interesting to see. However, the first thing we've got to mention right here before the game even starts, four regular buzzword, non-GX buzzword, and only one GX. What are your thoughts on that? Really? <laughs> oh, that's your thoughts. <laughs> what? That's, that's my general reaction. Oh, that looks really cool. So, non We've got the 2 2 rock with like and rock line in there in order to have that gust effect, move things in and out, make those prizes really easy for regular Buzzwell to take, and of course the 2 2 Remoraid and Octillery line. Uh, there looks to be some pretty awesome stuff in here as well. We've got two Super Rod. Two Super Rod. These decks are not known really for getting things out of the discard very often, but two Super Rod going against everything everyone ever knows, and of course the weirdest one right here eight basic fighting energy. Hmm, does he play. Uh, Max Elixir. Yeah, three of them. So it's it's quite quite an interesting uh, build. I'm I'm super stoked. Super see. stoked. This and this is going to be Stefan's exciting. List. He plays Zorak. That's the first thing. But he plays Lucario GX and Deontay Prism Star. Very cool. So yeah, you can take one at knockouts on Buzzwall with the combination if you evolve. Like before that, the like the biggest swing Lucario could do was knock out the top later. But now 20 more. That's not 190. And yeah, let's see if it works out uh, as much as he wants to. Yeah, I think I think with it, you've got this interesting scenario now where 190 is the the key number of the format. 190 is what you want to be hitting regularly and consistently. So the fact that now this Lucario deck is actually able to consistently hit that number by evolving, we've got a really exciting thing going on here to where Stephanie is actually able to jump up, knock out these buzz walls, knock out these baby buzz walls as well just from a regular evolve and a strong energy and actually might not be able to be responded on so just before the game starts as well we've got to look at both these players past records obviously Tord, three-time international champion um, absolutely fantastic run this season right at the top of the cp and i think second to only azul in the world and of course stefan ivanov a massive performance in all of the European regionals, but playing very fire-based decks. So it'll be really interesting to see how he plays up with something else in his uh, in his pocket this time. Uh, both players looking for the time, and I think we are going to set off as soon as the judge gives them the green light. Uh, both players ready to go. So obviously, uh, the first thing we've got to mention: uh, these Zoroas are going to and Zoroaks are going to be very vulnerable to this uh, regular Buzzwall. Uh, we mentioned earlier on that the uh, Sledgehammer attack can be extremely strong, but especially on a dark, dark type when it's hitting for weakness and hitting for times two, how do you think that's going to play off? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and Tord, Tord's quickly switched the Zoro onto his side of the board just to make things seem a little bit no more normal. But yeah. in this alternate universe we're staying in today, yeah. Stephanie is actually the one with the Zoroa. Yeah, so the um, non-GX boss will also just steal 30 for one energy and with the um, boss wall GX you can knock out a Zorua and then put 30 on a bench Zorua as well. Um, this of course set up the knockout for the future, but now with Yancy Prism it's actually so easy to just knock out um, Zorax with one energy anyway, so this might not even be really needed, but the bus will, the non-GX bus will, yeah, we will, we will see how well We will it see it, works, especially with four of them in the list, I think we're definitely going to have a chance to see it over these three games, uh, or two games, should I say. Uh, one thing about uh, Stefan's list, uh, I'm wondering, does he have any psychic attackers in there? Does he have anything to combat this fighting? Yeah, he plays one uh, Mewtwo from Evo, um, okay. from Evolutions, and that's it. So, the bare minimum, no Mew, for example. Uh, Mew is really weird now because Buzzball just. Is able to just. Knocked it out. Yeah, exactly. It's like. The moment Buzzball was announced, there were a few people actually who said, like, oh, that's not too good. Um, well, yeah, that was also before the Yancy was announced, I think. But the first thing I thought, I was like, yeah, you can just knock out Mew EX now with Sledgehammer. And everything else is still really strong. It's 130 HP um, for 1 energy 30 with all the buffs. You can just take two at knockouts, um, which you also do with the boss wall GX. But this non yeah uh, non GX, so only one prize card. Um. I think the really interesting thing about it as well is uh, we sort of found that last format, sort of before Forbidden Light, or even before these three baby buzz wall decks were sort of starting to come into play, Mew EX really kept buzz wall in check. Buzzwall players were scared of over committing to the Buzzwall because Mew was so easily able to just DCE, 
use Riot as beaten and get those knockouts, you know, and respond, and so was Mewtwo. But now you have these baby buzzes that only really ever have one energy on them at the most. You have a Mew that goes for two prizes, but not only that, you find that Knuckle Impact isn't always the most used attack in these games anymore. Obviously, Tordemy playing one GX, he's only ever going to really have one energy on there, making Mew EX and Mewtwo not as effective, unfortunately. Yeah, now you had a really interesting decision here from Tord. He took a lot of time. Yes, uh, Professor Sycamore, that makes Elixir, and Ultra Ball, and the cards he discarded in his hand. And you might think about like keeping um, either of them, and you can make Elixir first in theory to the uh, Rockruff and not play the Ultra Ball at, at all. Um, to yeah, just keep the cards potentially have more options. But here in this situation, I think yeah, just grabbing the boss wall, uh, being able to get an Elixir off of that is also fine. And. Um, um, so the thing that we have here is Tord obviously going for a very aggressive early turn. Um, he knows that he's able to knock out the Zoro in the active fairly easily, he's only had to attach one energy. But now the Elixir will be interesting. Does he go to start setting up that Lycan Rock by attaching it to the Rock Ruff? Yes he does. Oh, really? <laughs> that answered yeah, my question really quickly. Um, I think this is actually the correct play. Simply because obviously you've got to remember with that uh, Lucario that comes in, it does have Cantankerous Beatdown. So you don't actually want to be leaving any damage on the Lucario in order for it to be able to take a knockout for just two energy. Uh, obviously it does 30 damage for every energy on it. So therefore, Tord might be looking for the option to wait for uh, Stefan's bench to be full, as it normally is in Zoroark decks, and then just being able to Dangerous Rogue, getting rid of a, a Lucario in one big swing, not having to deal with the GX attack later on. Yeah, quite interesting that he took so much time considering it, because if you are committed on the Mixed Elixir, you have to thin out with Ultra Ball first <laughs> anyways. Um, yeah, so maybe 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 we were missing something else. But Tor just taking the knockout here. Um, you can see in his prize cards there's nothing too interesting for Stefan. The Mutus prize that might be uh, important, but currently it's not really needed. So it's a uh, second turn. In theory, the Riolu can evolve now. And in theory, however, we can see a Lucario in there as well, meaning that I'm pretty sure he's only got one left yes. in deck, right? Yeah, so he's going to have to put in some legwork to be able to get that. I know he's got trade, but obviously with just one left, we have no idea where it could be. He might not be able to get into it this turn. Um, as well as that, though, he will need the strong energy in order to be able to knock out the buzz wall in the active spot. That 130 HP proving really awkward for a lot of stuff. Lots of Pokemon do a straight 120 damage in this format, and 130 just tweaks it over that mark, keeping it alive for another turn. Yeah, so Stefan seems to have the Lucario in his hand, actually, but maybe he with the energy. Um, so he is going to evolve. He only plays strong energy, there is no basic fighting energy in the stack. So he four double colorless, uh, four strong, which means that he will always have the knockout on Buzzwall if he's able to attack. And the basic energy don't really help him too much. There is no um, super rod which might recover it. Like a hand hammer isn't really that big of an issue, uh, I would suppose. And there is nothing that search your deck for basic energy, so just only playing strong energy is fine. You will probably almost never attach two basic fighting to Zorak just to attack with the. Uh, the regular attack. Yeah, so playing the strong here, just only strong energy, seems like the play. I um, think uh, the, the good thing about all strong energy as well is uh, these Zoro White decks tend to run Puzzle of Time. And as we all know, when you play two Puzzle of Time, you can go into your discard pile and grab any two cards you need. So, of course, if they do, if he does come into a situation where he does come into a deck, uh, perhaps a Greninja deck where he's getting enhanced hammered a lot and stuff like that, uh, he is actually able to puzzle back these strong energies, meaning that he should realistically be able to keep the energies on the board, keep them on the Lucario at all times, and obviously be able to uh, keep things moving. The really interesting thing to note here, though, is by whiffing that energy, he's now no longer to use or uh, no, uh, no longer able to use Aura Strike in order to hit 140 next turn. He's now got to go for a completely different play because obviously that Lucario has already evolved, meaning that it won't activate that turn. Yeah, no, nothing he really does will help him too much. Maybe using a knockout with Guzma on Remorite or the um, Rockruff might be a viable play, but it's really problematic. Like if you have no Riolus in play, you can't use Acerola. I mean, you can, but you just play the Acerola and nothing really changes. Of course, maybe you have to because um, you get the turret knockout and the GX attack from Lucario 
It's actually quite strong against Buffalo GX. Yes, of course. But not against the sports state here. Now it's just a I think, single knockouts. Yeah, I think what we're seeing here already is a landslide. I think that Tord has had a really nice first couple of turns. Although he's had one attachment, that is the power of this Buzzwell. You need one energy, you can knock out these Zoruas, and he's just sliding ahead. He's uh, not really doing anything. He's not had to make any sort of really crucial decisions here so far. But you know what he is doing? He's just pulling ahead, and he's doing things nicely. He has Ultra Ball for that Lycan Rock as well, which means we probably will see the Bloodthirsty Eyes come down now. Uh, he, as we said previously, he doesn't want to leave damage on this Lucario as it is able to Cantankerous. So we will pull up that um, oh. Zoroark and, of course, go in for the Dangerous Rogue. Very nice there from Tord. Getting down that extra energy as well. Tord actually had no hand cards left. Has no? Oh, okay, right. I think, I think he had to do... I mean, he could have went for Tapu Lele, but does he play Lele? Uh, he doesn't play Lele. I was just, I was just wondering, like, um, he could have went for Lele... And then I looked at the deck list. So, oh, okay, he doesn't play Layla. Really interesting. Especially so, because not usually Layla is in every deck. So this is a really interesting uh, piece that we've got to in this format. Just while uh, they're shuffling up, we can discuss this. We sort of saw Glaceon GX uh, announced a while ago. To where everyone thought Layla counts have to drop now. Layla counts have to drop because Glaceon's going to be huge. Glaceon didn't become big, but still we've seen a big drop in the Lele count still. You're seeing more decks play two, even one, and now we have Tord bringing in the new style of fashion and playing zero. Yeah, I don't really think the uh, <laughs> um, the disappearance of Tapu Lele has anything to do with Glaceon necessarily. Oh no, it definitely but, doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> but in this situation here, if you know Tord doesn't play Lele, then you also know that he had to do something, like he had to take a knockout, otherwise he can't really do anything. And this will be very good for uh, Stefan. So Tord now needs an Ultra Ball to get uh, Octillery, and he actually has one. Um, I think he got it from either from the prize cards or top this is ridiculous. Yeah, th there's one thing that Tord will continuously do to surprise me, and that is the ability to just hit the cards that he needs. He gets the Octillery down. This means five new cards for Tord. Hopefully, he's going to be seeing things like his Elixirs. Uh, you know. Anything here helps, you know, elixirs, more energy, strong energy, and of course this Lycanroc now doesn't want to be in a position where it has to hit this Lucario. But if you have strong choice and Deancey, that should be enough for a knockout, right? Strong choice, Deancey. Oh, it's 10 short. It's 10 short. Oh, okay, fair enough. 10 short. 10. Um, However, if you had a hyperspace punch Hooper, <laughs> this, uh, he does have the DMC though. But even now, because Lilo, the Lycanroc already has damage, so I think the Jax attack still isn't really a threat here in this situation. Um, so probably damaging it, the worst thing that could happen is just Ace Roller and taking a knot over Zora. But if Stefan does that, then it's a four price turn, so Tor can just take a knock up there. Of so, course, so yeah. yeah, he does go for that. He does put the damage down. Of course, I think the Cantankerous beatdown was a lot more effective if the Pokemon wasn't damaged yet and it was being wait it was waiting to be used. For example, if that Lycanroc was still on the bench with the one energy and the Cantankerous came down then and was able to sweep it before it did its job, then obviously that would put Tord in an awkward position. But now that it's already got 80 damage on it, Cantankerous doesn't really look like too great of an attack anymore. He will obviously be able to take those two prizes, but Buzz can just come back into the active and clean back up as he will be down to four prizes. Yeah, especially getting this Octillery in that turn was so insane because otherwise Stefan would, like Todd, wouldn't have a lot of access to a lot of cards in that four prize turn. So he can just now the baby but uh, the Nojax boss will deal so much damage um, the next turn and if Todd has a beast ring um, he can start charging up so really crucial really crucial um, draw from Todd but now it's um, Stefan's turn he uh, his doesn't his deck doesn't really seem like it's running uh, like it's supposed to currently no and he's I think struggling he with a wants. lot of things um, in theory the Mewtwo the with the 80, 80 and 100, 110 damage, um, so that wouldn't even be enough, but yeah, it's in the price card still. Um, Stefan playing double puzzle for Bridget, Zora. Uh, you can tell things aren't going well. If you're Bridget in this late in the game to get down your basics, you can tell things just aren't going your way. Torn on three prizes, 
he's got access to another knockout. I think Todd might already have this game, unfortunately. I can't see any way for Stefan to get back in this, especially due to the fact that next turn, Todd's going to be able to A, use Sledgehammer, and B, use B-String. And for those of you watching at home uh, and don't know the context of these cards, the Sledgehammer attack does 30 damage. But when your opponent is on four prize cards left, it does 90 more, taking it to 120 base damage. And that's before you add things like strong energies, beast energies, and the anti. But then as well as that, beast ring, as we discussed right at the start, one of the more controversial cards in the format, when they are down to three or four prizes, you can attach two energy from your deck to your Pokemon. And Tord does have the beast ring in hand as yeah. well. And now we have the most important turn probably um, for Tord, or one of the more important turns. Beast Ring also works if your opponent has three prize cards left, which is crazy because... Even once he knocks out this Buzzwall, it's still a problem. Yeah, Tord has no GX Pokemon in play, and I'm pretty sure he will not change that fact uh, anytime soon. I can't see him doing that yeah. as one of the best players in the world. If we can see it, he can definitely see it. So I think uh, the two energy go onto the bench Buzzwall, though. Uh, I think Tord knows that he can firmly knock out the active now with this one. So even if this... Uh, uh, Regular Buzz in the active does get knocked out. He's able to respond with the one on the bench quite easily with either Swing Around or Sledgehammer for the last prize of the game. Yeah, and um, now there is no bench space left for Tord. Um, I think he does play he, Brook, Brook Little. Yeah, he plays three of them, so he could make space for another Buzz Wall if he gets um, the second Beast Ring. He has three Beast Rings in his deck, but the way the, de the deck is built is actually really cool because you can play without Jake's Pokemon so much. And the beast, so you always get like two turns of beast ring um, with the normal boss wall deck in theory. You get like one turn, and if you get knocked out afterwards, then um, that's over, and these were your cards. But for this deck, probably supposedly, in most situations, you can actually have two turns of um, beast rings, which we might actually see here. And the sledgehammer is really charged, so it's um, 30, 90 more, 120, 140. plus strong, and the 160. So 160 damage. Um, doesn't really and matter here, because the Lucario already has damage, and the support And Tord does draw into another baby buzz, a beast ring, and a, and a fighting energy. Yeah, but no Brook Little yet. Um, he might actually just attach to the active, which seems like... Seems like the correct play. I can't see anything really wrong with that at all. Uh, he knows that really he's in a firm position for this matchup. He's in a position where he can take quite a few risks now. Uh, that active Pokemon could go down next turn. However, Stefan would need... Actually, it, it's impossible for it to go down next turn. I just realized. Uh, the other Lucario is prized. But he, he did draw the Mewtwo from the prize cards. Oh, so okay, you did draw me too. Okay, I was going to, okay. Uh, obviously, with Zoroark, he wouldn't have been able to hit the 130, so. Um, and he does retreat, so he's going for oh, the safer five play. Five energy keeping attached one turn. That's five so energy crazy. attached one turn. He's going for the slightly safer play here. Uh, he's just going to go for the regular attack and then keeping the strong energy nice there, ready to take a knockout if needed on something slightly bigger, such as a Lucario GX. So, tore down to one prize left. In a very firm position here, he's got Octillery. If he gets end to one, not an issue for Tord. He's going to get four more cards off that Octillery. And of course, those Buzzwalls both set up and ready to go. I can't really see any way for Stefan to win this yeah, one. Yeah, Tord only has one prize card left. Um, two Buzzwall in place. Both of them are able to swing around. And yeah, potentially, even if one of them gets knocked out, there's still a B-string to charge up a uh, Buzzwall Jax, for example. Um, if, if that's even necessary, uh, because... If it's necessary. Yeah, I, I mean, mean he just not, needs right? a Guzma, right, to win? Just or... needs a Guzma to win. Obviously, being able to do that with Octillery, he doesn't have an Ultra Ball in hand, so even if he feels a little bit more greedy and in a firm position, he can Ultra Ball away a few cards in his hands, hope to Abyssal Hand into that Guzma, and of course, just slam it down on the table, yeah. get the job done and win this game. But uh, Stefan, he's got a difficult play here to make. He's got to decide whether he really digs deep and obviously goes for the DCE for that Mewtwo that he currently doesn't have in hand. If he does put that Mewtwo up, however, it can really easily be knocked out as well, giving Tord the last prize that he needs. Yeah, he would need to either get a knockout actually on the bench possible or draw on a handsammer as well and get lucky on top of that. Because currently, swing around for a double tailed deals uh, 120. 120. So that would be, currently this is the only hope Stefan would have, but if Tord just gets another strong energy, which is not too unlikely. 
he will even with the double tails knock out a Mewtwo potentially not even like the, the crazy thing is is we've just mentioned that so in every other matchup Stefan was completely correct there and into one end to one is a, a really good way to claw your way back into a match not allowing your opponent and he scoops anyway uh, I was gonna say the abyssal hand draws toward those cards and I imagine that he would have hit the Guzma for game um, Tord just went ahead and completely blew that game out of the water Todd there. was like, yeah, let's look at the top four cards. But there was no Guzma. There was no, no Guzma, energy, unfortunately. Was, yeah. so, uh, so, you know, your assumption of that match, uh, it's very well known that obviously Zoroark is definitely going to struggle against these Buzzwall decks, especially now that you've got this uh, non-GX Buzzwall in there. But uh, did that go quite as bad as you thought it would? Well... I, I was hoping to have a kind of different match. I mean, Stefan did, didn't draw the cards he wanted. And Torch deck kind of surprised me. Like, just looking at the list, we weren't really sure what's the point or how it works. But it's actually quite cool because you can um, you can play around a GX getting knocked yeah. out by not having GX. So you can use a GX for the first two prize cards. Your opponent knocks that one Pokemon out. One prize. That's all of your GX you need for the game. And you will get a lot of B-strings. Exactly. A lot of B-strings. Not only that, we, we can't underestimate the power of Absorption GX, of course, with the elixirs and everything in there as well. Three energy, 40 damage for each prize your opponent still has left. Uh, that's without damage modifiers as well. So being able to do up to, in this deck, 310 damage with your GX attack if your opponent has six prize cards is insane. It's how much you have left, right? You have left. Yeah. I completely <laughs> just talked talk nothing but... Rubbish, essentially. Ah, no problem, so, no problem. We're all tired. <laughs> either way, when you have six prize cards left, either way, it's still 310 damage you can get yourself up to. Tor being able to do that with the Buzzwall GX if he does start it. So it's not even a bad starter either. But uh, as we said, he's a very smart player. He's going to know he doesn't need to bench those GXs late in the game. He knows that Lucario is able to Cantanker his beat down into them and take two prizes in the late game as well. So perhaps we won't even see one come down in these games. Yeah, and this looks really familiar. Um, oh yeah, it looks really familiar. from hand, Sora start against Buzzwall start. Um, the press cards are kind of different now, but for both players, they, didn't, they don't really seem that crazy. Um, I don't think there's a very important card in either of the disco cards. No, I think uh, obviously for Tord, the only maybe slight worry is one of the Brooklyn Hills being priced. I know we still did have two in the deck, but the parallel did come down last game. It did keep his bench quite small, giving him less options than he would have had. He still managed to come out on top, but of course, with that Brooklet Hill being in there with no field blower in the deck to remove the stadiums either, it's important. It's really important that Tord, you know, gets that Brooklet Hill and is able to bump a parallel if he finds himself in an awkward position without it. Yeah, but we had we did see the parallel around one, uh, game one, and it was really irrelevant. Was oh yeah, like of course it was it was irrelevant. Nothing. It, like it, it only prevented like a third battle from being charged, but at that point the prize cards were already to the point that you need one attack to win, basically. So we see what I think is expected. We see the, th uh, the three Zoro are on field, one Riolu. Uh, that's the one debate that I have with this matchup. Would you not be better going for two Riolu, uh, keeping as little Zoroark on the board as possible? Obviously, you need them to keep the deck functioning the way it does. But I just think, you know, with him so vulnerable, even to a Jet Punch or a Sledgehammer in the early turns, it seems really risky. And of course, the Zoro on the bench already with the DC. I think I can see a Guzma in the back of Tord's hand there as well. So even an it's energy elixir. and That's a Guzma. That's a really, really interesting hand. Even an energy and a Guzma gets rid of that DC straight away. And uh, it's really, really tough for Stefan here. Even when he makes the correct plays, they just seem to be completely shut down by Tord. Yeah, but I think you need as many Zoroks as you can grab. Because like now the first Zoro will get knocked out, then you have two Zoroks left. Um, it's kind of unlikely that Tord will be able to play Guzma on all of them. And at some point, when you have like string around with a strong Deancey and Choice Band, it doesn't really matter, like a Lele on the bench is as vulnerable as well. So um, this I love. We see Tord, he's got two elixirs in hand. Yeah. And he's looking at his prize cards like, hmm, you know what looks good with six prizes left and two elixir in hand? Absorption GX. So I have a feeling we're going to see both these elixirs hit the board fairly soon and those oh, energies finding their way onto really Buzzwall lucky. GX. Yes, one in the discard pile, one on the prize card, so only six energies left on a really thick six deck. Only, yeah, the really thick um, deck there. Um, but quite still, quite yeah. a risk to play them this early in the game as well, but I, I don't mean, think he really has really much risk. choice. I think Max Elixir is, um, unless you can thin out right there on the spot, you have to play them. 
And he only plays three, so yeah, it's a cool card to have, I suppose. Yeah, I think with these decks, it does allow um, your opponent to have more things to play around. You always have to keep in the back of your mind, even though there might be a Pokemon on the bench with no energy on it yet, you've got to keep in the back of your mind, oh, he might not have used his elixirs yet, therefore, he might actually be able to get this set up and get this hitting into me this turn. Um, really quickly cutting aside, though, obviously, uh, this Buzzwall puts 30 on the Riolu, knocks out the Zorua, and Tord pulling ahead very quickly already. Oh, this is this is going to be very annoying for Stefan. But Tord has no rem right in play, which is kind of a, a light at the end. And his hand didn't seem strong at all. I think he had no. I think no that's all energy. that he has. He doesn't have any more energy in there. I and definitely no, didn't no see a. Card, uh, no, yeah. I didn't see a supporter. I think the only one I saw was the Guzma at the end yeah, of his hand. Me too. Um, so it'll be a case of obviously Tord being Tord will probably work something out here or just continue to jet punch. I don't even think continuing to jet punch is a bad thing here. Putting some damage out on the board and stuff like that, making uh, one shot knockouts on Zoroark more accessible with just a sledgehammer. Um, not being able to one shot Buzzwall without. The Diancy and the Strong Energy and the Choice Band as well. And we just see Stefan Guzmarin up and Ooh. passing. That is it for his turn. Uh, he hits he, the Strong he Energy strong as energy well. Um, no, like the uh, <laughs> Guzma is putting in even more work. So it's 100 damage here uh, right off the bat. Non this is this is insane, isn't it? Yeah, I feel really sorry for Stefan there. I feel that uh, the only access card that he had in his hand was Guzma. He wanted to move that Buzzwall out of the active just to make sure that it doesn't get the last energy down on it, obviously, to start doing some real damage, but was punished straight away just from a simple strong energy and doing 100 damage on his Arawak. And uh, we see the second uh, Rioli come down here. Um, obviously not the detect one, going for a little bit more of an offensive Riolu on the bottom there. Yeah, with the Anti Prism, I think it is 10 for 1 energy, yeah. and he only plays strong energies, basically, so he can... So you can take it all the way to 60. Take a lot of damage. <laughs> take it up to 60, especially um, on in, in the mirror match, for example. Uh, you, you can even do 120 to a Zoroark for just a strong energy, which isn't too shabby at all. Yeah. It opens up the plays for Zoroarks to obviously take the last finishing HP off them as well. So... Again, although Tord's board state looks lacking, he's still in a really comfortable position. Uh, Stevan only taking one prize card off that buzz wall. Uh, Tord only needing one more energy in order to start using his Knuckle Impact attack and his Absorption attacks. It's just fighting to dark, just does not seem to be working very well for Stefan this round. Yeah, so we have now two Zoroaks in play, Evo Soda being able to evolve it. Um yeah, even if Stefan's able to attack here, he can take the knockout. He does play one Kukui, so in, at some point he can take a one knockout at a non-GX non bus wall. But like this is so strong. Zorak just can't really keep up with the, um, the non-GX um, bus wall because you can't one it knockout it. Yeah, of course. I think the fantastically interesting thing about that as well is that you, you just said that, you know, uh, Stefan can hit the Kukui hit the strong energy uh, and and knock out a baby buzz uh, straight away. Or he can hit the Kukui on his Zoroark with a full bench and be able to take the knockout. But it's all that work just for one prize. Yeah. And then all that Tord has done is put a strong energy down and he's taking two prizes turn after turn. Yeah, he, has no, he didn't even draw anything on top of draw for turn yet. And he's still in a good position. And and that's just the crazy thing. And I think that this that's when you definitely know that a matchup is in a bad position for you. When you have to put in all the work that you put in just to be able to get the bare minimum of what you want. And then the other player on the other side of the board can just go, oh, I'll just put this here, I guess. And I'm just going to erase all the work that you just did. So Yeah, but Stefan still is... Um, oh, he still has the upper hand because Tord needs to draw something. He has a strong he has Guzman. has a Guzma and, and strong though, so I, I, to be honest with you... He can use GX, knockout, or or he can use either Absorption or this... Um, how's it called? I would game? imagine this turn that he just wants to finish off the Zoroark and the active with um, with the Baby Buzz Wall. Hmm. Because that means that... Oh, actually, no. We, we, come, into he, a, we come into a weird situation here to yeah, where... He only gets 100, so he... Can take, he can attach a strong energy active to take the knockout, but he needs to draw prize cards because he needs a supporter. He know, like he probably didn't check, but he might know that there's a supporter card in the prize cards, so he just needs to get any cards somehow. 
and we see he will draw a Brooklyn Till. Yeah, and like I like I suppose absorption um, just for for the two prize cards. Now he can he has, he has used his GX attack. So you won't really have a lot of opportunity uh, opportunities to do, so. to do so, and also he doesn't really want to use more than one GX if he goes for a similar game plan in game one. He got the Brooklyn Till from the prize cards, which which will makes help. yeah um, he can get a Riolu, but Stefan. In theory, he can take the one at knockout <laughs> with this Riolu if he promotes it. Um, he seems to not have got the all DMC the in pieces hand. in his hand yet, but if he promotes Zorak, he can still retreat um, in case he gets the one at knockout. So for Stefan, if he gets the one at knockout there, and then there's a big timer on Torx's uh, side. But also, if he gets the one at knockout there, um, he will be able to take to deal a lot of damage with the um, sledgehammer attack. And use Brooklyn Till to get either Remoride or another boss wall, depending on the card he gets from top of his deck now. Um, so for both players, this is a really, really interesting situation. But Stefan, That's if he's strong. not able, if he's not able to take the knockouts, um, yeah, Tord can just knock out any Pokemon. Then he has two prize cards left, so in theory, he just needs to attack once. Um, oh, Stefan only needs a Lucario. Just needs a Lucario. He's only really got an end to get him there. Yet. He only has an end. He does not want to play that. He does not want to play end. On the other hand, end only gives Todd one extra card. Um, we bo both, all of us, we four people and the viewers <laughs> in the chat, we all know he has two random cards in his hands. And there is no way to value these. Because exactly. he drew both of them. He had the zero hand cards and he drew both of them from the prize cards. So there is zero information in these cards for Stefan. Which means for him it's 200% random cards, and if he plays N, Torch will go up to three 100% random cards. So he will give him a slight chance, like one extra from uh, from the draw, but there is still a high chance that Torch um, doesn't have anything. Of course, the one interesting thing though, that the N could provide us is we did say that Torch drew the Brooklet Hill off of the prizes. Um, obviously, we did see the Rock Riff in hand, but it would have been quite interesting to see a situation where Torch couldn't get it out, and he hits the Evo Soda. Um, oh, is that leaving that, that behind. Enough, right? That is enough with the Deancey, the Strong, and the Choice Band. He can move the Zoroark out and take the one shot. Tor did hit the Rock Ruff, so he is safe once that Baby Buzz goes down. And of course now, the really interesting thing this opens is Tor's actually able to use Beast Ring now as well, and Sledgehammer, as Stefan will go down to four prizes. Yeah. So the game opens up now into a situation for both players to be firmly in control. It just depends on what Tor gets, and he gets the Brooklyn yeah, Hill. his hand is really bad as well. His but hand like, is can, not looking good. He can good. get Remorite. And then he has a choice between um, benching Rockruff or or just attacking uh, with Jet Punch here. Because like if he he cannot play the Ultra Ball now because he needs to get um, Octillery next turn. But if he doesn't, if however, he, if he, he hasn't benches, played his Lele, has he? It's still not in the deck. Yeah, it's still not still not in the deck. It hasn't just magically appeared. Like, <laughs> oh. um, yeah. But if he if he puts the Rockruff on the bench, uh, he has to discard the top card from his deck, which is kind of random. But he has to promote the Remorite if he doesn't bench the Rockruff, so he has to put it down now. And oh, it's yeah. so dangerous leaving that much damage on Lucario. Yeah, and especially Aura Strike still gets a knockout here, and Tort, he can attack next turn in theory because he still has the B strings, but he would need to draw a lot of cards. He would need to get the Rockruff out of the active because, yeah, it's not an Ultra Beast, um, and you can't attach two of two energies without elixir he only has one elixir in his deck and he has to promote the rock rough anyways because he knows he has an ultra ball i think he has an energy but he knows he will have to discard that probably anyways Stefan, now you're cool um he's in a super good position now yeah, all of a sudden brooklet hill all of a sudden he can use brooklet hill he's got that three riolo uh his lucario in the active is not only able to knock out buzzwall with aura strike but it can also take a one-shot knockout with Cantankerous beat down if Tord does decide to get the Lycan Rock out and he can keep it alive this turn. So Stefan now has a lot more options than he originally had, and he's sort of in the position Tord was in the first game, to where he has so many options Ooh, that Tord has to play around so much, and he gets the Remoraid as well. That is absolutely humongous from Stefan, <laughs> taking away Tord's draw possibilities, meaning that he's just got this Buzzwall left. He had the Artillery as well. Oh... oh. It just top deck the artillery and now the uh, sledgehammer goes down to dealing 30 so 50 damage that's 100 so the zorak stays in play 
Stefan needs to attack once more, and I'm pretty sure the game is over here. Yeah, I think the game's over. Tord with a damaged Buzzwall, doesn't have anything in hand. That Guzma for the Remoraid oh was boy. huge. Strong. That was one of the most important plays I think we'll see all day. That, especially with the top deck of the artillery straight afterwards, Stefan's got to be jumping inside. He's got to be screaming. That was absolutely excellent from his side of the board. Yeah, I wanted to comment on that, but we have face cam and the way Stefan and Tord interact with the opponent is really different. Like Tord's always kind of me me or uh, like showing stuff. <laughs> like he, he revealed the artillery just because he was like, ah, I got it. But <laughs> Stefan is always just sitting there and watching very carefully. Trying to keep very calm. Yeah. I think that um, against a big player such as Tord as well, Tord is able to gauge a lot of things from body language and things like that. He's a very experienced player. So I think Stefan's got the right idea, keeping calm, keeping composed and not trying to give anything I away. Actually, like I think, I think, I think like reading body language is kind of overrated. I'm pretty sure there's almost no opponent that you can actually make any solid read on. Oh, like, you could definitely count on me. I get yeah, very I know, excited. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, know I, I also know a really strong player and whenever I see his face I know if his hand is good or not. But yeah, if you can prevent that, um, that's really nice as well. And now Stefan um, He's firmly in control here. The Lycanroc, not a threat now. Tord, no energy on the Lycanroc already, of course. Which means he can no longer um, a Max Elixir onto it either. Meaning that there is no way to get energy onto that Lycanroc uh, in order to use Dangerous Rogue this turn. Yeah, but so Tord... it's, not, it's not actually completely over for Tord because yeah, he could use Ultra Ball for Artillery, which was the original plan. But he could also use it for Lycanroc. And because of the um, Guzma, the boss will kept the energy, so he could knock out the um, Lucario again. <laughs> but we see Which the double means he's puzzle. Only, he's down to one prize card. Unfortunately for Tord, this is the one supporter he has in this prize card, which he was hoping to draw the whole time. So now he is in top deck mode again. Um, it didn't really work out for him yet. Um, he was in, he is in top deck mode the whole game. And um, that is going to hurt big time. Uh, obviously, Stefan going in, double puzzling, getting the choice band. He's got the Diancy already. He has the Lucario in hand. He just needs the energy now. And he plays the N, putting Tord down to just three cards. And Tord goes back into top deck mode. No Remoraid, no Artillery. Let's see what happens. Yeah, and this time the N, because Tord drew two prize cards, and but down to one. Now the N is actually disruptive again. Um, because it's one card less for Tord, and like we already said, yeah, if you draw a prize card, that's random, unless you go and play Town Map or something like that. Uh, couldn't actually see what Tord had in his hand there. Obviously, he's going to be hoping for something like a draw supporter in order to stop this stagnant face of play that he's had for so many turns now. And Stefan hits the Ultra Ball as well. He's able to get the Lucario down. Uh, whether he wants it this turn or not is another debate. I think he is fine by just knocking out with... Uh, Zarowak, but he is able to take those last two prizes. Oh, he got, he got the Sigamore off Sigamore. the top deck. But he only has one elixir in his deck left, and V string is not working anymore. So there isn't really too much he can actually do with this. Um, he has two energy in his hand as well. So even if Tor did have an elixir, I think his chances of hitting it are probably far gone now, to be honest with you. Uh, you'd have to be extremely lucky. Uh, he passes over. Stefan knows now that he is able to get down that Lucario. He's got the enhanced hammer as well. If Tord put down a strong energy on that Lycanroc then, I think that would have been good game if he had that uh, enhanced yeah, hammer just interest then. Yeah, interestingly enough, like Tord still has a decent chance of winning in theory. I mean, not really decent, but it's still possible. However, Stefan can just take two knockouts and the Lycanroc, the Jax attack's already used, so it can't really attack next turn. It can just tank one one attack and then with a third energy can still take the knockout of course so Stefan needs to get um, a knockout on both Dianzi and Remoraid or go straight for the two knockout on the um, Lycanroc immediately so do you think here the correct play is to grab another basic and put it down or do you think it's to get the Lucario because obviously in order for Zorua to take a knockout on the, D, uh, the Dianzi he does need another basic on his bench no, he doesn't. There's five. I, I thought this was his discard, like, right no, here. Oh, no, yeah. I thought this was his discard. But I think he have to evolve the um, Riolu, because... Lele here for N, yep. putting Tor back yeah, down okay, to one. Good. Yeah, I was That's just so saying, correct. because, like, he would need to do anything, um, because Tart can still bench another bus wall, and Strong Energy Guzma would win him in the game because of the um, 30 damage on the Riolu, on the bench. So that was a winning option for Tord, but Stefan 
successfully prevented that. In theory, I mean, if Torque gets um, Octillery, he can still draw everything he'll he still needs. Still draw. Um, but yeah, and here we see the lost zone. No Octillery, so he can't play Guzma. Which he means hits the Cynthia off the top. Yeah, I mean, again. but it, but it's still like he can't really do too much with it. Um, he he only has one elixir in his deck, so he can't attack with uh, Baby Buster. And Buzzle. I think I think yeah, he passes, and now Stefan needs uh, Guzma. Guzma to and win the that game. That is it. But Obviously, playing down that Lele last turn did get him the end oh. last turn, but it means he can't play another one down this turn. His hand looked not good, so he needs to draw something with trade. Um, he has a parallel city in his hand. I would pitch that parallel city. If he, no, it doesn't really matter. Like if Tord gets a Guzma, he can also he can knock out um, almost everything. And there's would... no way with the parallel that Stefan gets down to so many Pokemon, which um, Tord cannot knock out because if he like discards both of his Zorak, the Deontay Prism is still in play. Um, and the strong and. Oh, well, he gets the strong, the right? That's enough. Gets the strong. That's yeah, what's, yeah and that's, that's it. it. All right. Well done. Right, that was a that was <laughs> really a tense cool, game there really towards cool the game. end. Yeah. Uh, once again, you know, me and you were sat there and we were thinking this game's just pulling in towards direction completely at the start of that game, but everything started to move in Stefan's direction. Uh, the, the, the knockout on the Remoraid was so key that absolutely swung the game straight into his hands, yeah. and all he had to do then was hold on to it right till the end. But this was like an uphill battle for Stefan. Even though Tor drew really bad, like and he, that just shows the inherent strength of the deck. I yeah, think. And, and the match. I mean, of course, the matchup. Um, Stefan probably thought, yeah, just be able to one it knock out a few um, GX buzzwords will be enough. And now, yeah, Stefan was probably looking at his deck saying, "Please behave yourself this game. We need, we need Zoroax up. We need Lucario's down. Please behave yourself." We need to draw well. That is our only way out of this game. And that is the thing. That is the reason Zoroark will never be fully gone. It is a card that provides you to draw the cards yeah, that your opponent draw, can't get. Draw two cards. That well, it will always it, 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 in any in any deck, there will always be any deck which can use Zoroark. But of course, they will be differently strong. I mean, an expanded Zoroark is insanely crazy. Um, we yeah, should see straight away. All right, um, so we see Mew to start, not probably the two best. Two strong energy tries for Stefan. Wow, that's not really great, that especially be because really tough. it's on the end. So these both players drew the prize cards in the order we told them to, which means that Stefan has no access to these strong energies anytime soon. So he has only two energy to attack with. That um, is very uh, stressful. However, on Tord's side of the board, we have some really interesting prizes. Yeah, I was just uh, going one to Remoraid, say. one Octillery, one Lycanroc, one of each of his key pieces. Uh, it might hold him back, it might not, but I do think we're in an interesting position here to where, you know, if Stefan does find himself being able to knock out the Remoraid again, obviously it's unknown knowledge to himself that the Remoraid's in there, but it might be the correct play. But now <laughs> Remoraid's on the bench, so the game is over, right? Like if if Remoraid if if it evolves, Tor just draws all cards. Exactly. And there is it's so re it, this matchup is really um, completely destroying my brain. It's just <laughs> it's just like Stefan needs to do so many things and Tor just a few cards. That's what so, I mean, and that's exactly the point I made at the start. And uh, um, the point I've been making on my podcast for the last couple of weeks, the thing with Buzzwall that makes it so good is the fact that. When you're playing your opponent, they'll be like, cool, I need to hit these five cards and I can knock you out now. And then you just go, okay, cool, I just hit B-string and we're good to go. Like, I'm still in this. It doesn't even bother me. Yeah, exactly. These Zorak decks used to be so strong because they were so consistent. And consistency is key. The most important thing. Um, but Buzzwall has a weird kind of consistency, which is that you only need, like, two cards. For other, for other decks, like... Here, for example, you can you play you play your four Ultra Ball to get your Layla and then Bridget get all the cards and you evolve, draw more because you need energy Guzman and stuff, and then you have Boss Wall, which is just like yeah, um, <laughs> attach energy, <laughs> knock out. <laughs> so lots of work, lots of brain yeah. work with Boss Wall decks. Lots. I mean, it's it's you you need to think a lot. I'm I'm not saying that it's easy to play. I'm just saying that you don't need a lot of cards um, to do so. to do a lot of things. Um, so it's an efficient deck, I would say. An efficient deck yeah. indeed. So looking at uh, towards the side of the board, he does get the Ultra Ball for the Octillery. As you said, that's a really important and integral part of this matchup. Tord now going to be able to, uh, you know, 
draw into everything he needs. He's going turbo toward again slightly. He's not quite at maximum speed yet, but he is playing a little fast. I'm pretty sure he's aware of the eight minutes left in the game. Uh, moving back over to uh, Stefan's side of the board, we didn't quite clean up on his side of the board before we uh, went on to other discussion. Uh, a full setup for him this game, oh, which uh, could actually be very nice for him. Two Riolu, two Zorua. Obviously the Lele filling at one, one of those spots, but uh, the Mewtwo both very efficient as well. Yeah, the, so. Mewtwo, the Mewtwo can just damage the active bus wall for one double colors energy card, um, which means that yeah everything will be a little bit more efficient. Uh, Tord just flying through his deck, another Ultra Ball. Uh, probably going to see the Baby Buzz hit the board here as well to make sure he's got a backup attacker behind that Lycanroc when it swings for those prizes. Uh, he's going to want a big swinger for when uh, Stefan gets down to those four prizes, so the Baby Buzz is probably the correct key here. Um, the interesting thing though will be next turn, will Stefan be able to get a Lucario fully going? because there is no Diancy on the board, meaning that he isn't able to one-shot that buzz in one hit, meaning that Absorption GX is a very big possibility. Yeah, now the boss will uh, getting bulked up. Um, no strong energy, but a choice band. Um, Diancy would make everything a lot I better. I think he just drew Diancy right oh, there. Sweet. Yeah, he hit Diancy. So He's got the Elixirs will, as well. Jet Punch will be 50 now. And with a strong energy, that's 70 next time, but that's not the perfect magic number. This no, it's not. 130 yeah. again. So uh, you proving can, its worth. Mewtwo is really strong. Um, like, if it had 10 HP less, it would be so much worse. Oh yeah, 100, 100, I'm pretty sure the new Deoxys got announced the other day, right? And it has the same attack as Mewtwo, but 120. And instantly yeah. I was like, nope, yeah. no one here is good, unfortunately. Uh, so we see the end. Uh, Tord really, really, really ramping through this now. Very aware of the time limit. He wants to get his win here. This is a matchup yes. that he yeah, feels exactly. he should win. And so he wants his win. I don't think he's going to be very happy walking away with the draw here, even against a player of Stefan Ivanov's uh, credentials. Yeah, but this is really interesting to watch. Um, I'm looking forward to the hand cards Stefan draws. If he gets a double color synergy card, yeah, he can already start um, applying some damage. Psychic would deal 80, which um, puts Boswell down to 110, which puts it in Carol range for um, Zora and, and Zora. Zora. But if Stefan actually is able to get a um, choice band, then he would deal one. one I think there one is four, the choice. Right? The choice oh, was in his hand. Enough. He opted not to play it though. Uh, that's interesting because I thought that um, because the Mewtwo is so hard to get knocked out next turn, um, that you can just try to take a two-hit knockout here, which would be yeah, quite Yeah, you see rewarding. the choice band right there on the top of his hand. Uh, it opted not to play it though. Uh, yeah, Drags out the Zorua. Most likely, I'm missing something. Uh, uh, drags out the Zora. I think this is definitely correct from Tord. He knows that Stefan's advantage in this game is going to be setting up multiple Zoroaks, getting him into his combo pieces, um, getting rid of that Zorua, saves that up, and he's putting 30 on that Lele. Very smart there, play there from Tord. He knows that Buzzwall, with just uh, baby Buzz, when uh, Stefan goes down to four prizes, just a strong energy means that Lele is an easy two prizes. And now I know why he didn't attach it, because you don't need two hits of the um, choice band, you only need one without and one with. So now it's already enough. Now is enough. Um, yeah, it's like it's 80 without choice band, but then of course it's not 30 more, it's yeah, 60 yeah. more of because course, of the weakness. Of course. Uh, um, yeah, very interesting there. Uh, once again, showing uh, myself and Connor discussed in the first game, obviously the importance of field blower and conserving your tools and not letting them get uh, removed. Obviously, Tord not playing any field blower, but still the safer play there from Stefan. I think it was right, not being too hasty to drop it down and just go for it that way. Yeah, and it's, it also just plays with the information. So Tord, if he knows the um, choice band is in Stefan's hand or in play, um, he can make different decisions, so he might think, oh, this Mewtwo is re more threatening than I thought, or he might actually think, oh, now I can go for an N. Um, so the less cards you play down, the better. And also, it's quite unlikely that Tor just plays a random N um, out of the blue. Um, Stefan, of course, he doesn't know really, he doesn't really know the deck list, but I wouldn't, I, w I wouldn't assume there are more than three N in Tor's deck as well. Uh, there's only two. Yeah. There's only two. So, uh, Torch kind of fast already removed the damage from the bus wall. You have to keep in mind, it will get knocked out with Psychic later. Um, yeah, Torch checking his watch a couple of times here at uh, Stefan's turn, then he's very aware of the time and just wants to get this game cleaned up. As we mentioned, he wants the win here. There is no reason why Torch's deck should not overcome Stefan's. Obviously, he ran quite hot in game two, but Torch very aware of that. 
um, attaching to the baby buzz, knowing that Stefan's now down to the magic four prizes. He's yeah, got the beast ring in hand sledge as well. It's hammer time. It's uh. sledge time, man. And beast ring is also in hand as well. So if he does manage to somehow hit a Brooklyn Hill or an Ultra Ball this turn, he can get it down. Opts not to, and just goes for the knockout, taking him down to three prizes. Yeah, the Ultra Ball wouldn't work because the. Um Parallel City Parallel still City prevents still him from, course, but, it, but it's still um, really, really strong and it's so unlikely for Stefan, it's not impossible, but really unlikely for Stefan to take the knockout on the bench Lycan Rock. He would need another strong energy and Tort might, Tort of course doesn't know his. It's still unlikely in Tort's position, but for our position we know that there are two strong energy prized. So to attach the another strong energy and get the Guzma and the Lucario all at once, plus a way to retreat or either sacrificing the double cast energy card attached to the Mewtwo, which is still a key Pokemon. Mewtwo can take a one hit knockout on a fully charged non GX Buzz Wall. Um, yeah, Todd knows he can play the B string next turn as well. So he can just like wait and see which makes more sense. Yeah, I think as well, obviously, Dangerous Rogue, ready to go. Stefan Khan change his mind now the parallel city is out and he has got four pokemon on the bench meaning that dangerous rogue cleanly able to knock out whatever it wants with a strong energy getting that lucario knockout and of course definitely taking that zara white one uh, another lele on board as well giving toward again more access to lower oh. hp pokemon and he gets the guzma uh probably for the artillery here most yeah Absolutely. I do think this is right, especially if uh, Stefan is able to hit an N uh, later in the game as well. Yeah, Octillery is such an important Pokemon for Tord. Um, Octillery is the kind of the motor which gives the deck the yeah. extra drill it needs to um, overcome the opponent. It just draws the B-strings for you and it saves you usually these only basic decks which use trainer cards and play from their hand a lot here we go have a lot of problems um, in the late game and against N especially but Doctori completely destroys it and this was probably not by design but Brooklyn also grabs Remorites um, exactly yeah I mean, we're, we're, hit, we're in for something extremely exciting here. We see the swing around, ready to go, ready to ramp up. Will Tord hit the key heads here? He hasn't got a strong energy on the baby buzz so far. He's got the sycamore. Will he hit it? But he might also draw a choice bent, which would be nice. Doesn't he hits but the beast does, and the strong, though, so it's fine. Like it. Oh, well, well. It's fair fine. enough. He, he, super just, he goes for the safe way because uh, he knocks out now and then... The um, Lycanroc is still charged. And he can and still... Tord is, Tord is absolutely flying. Time. He is not wasting any time at all. Just B-string, super odd. And he, he has to shuffle one of the boss walls in his deck. Wait a second, I would run. He does, yeah. He does have to shuffle that buzz wall back in. Uh, super odd, a uh, very important card. Obviously saying, shuffle in a combination of basic energy and Pokemon up to three. However, if you do have the Pokemon in there or the energy, they have to go in. It does not give you an option. Alve may. It does, however, say that you have to. So Tord obviously not wanting that buzz wall in there realistically because he could draw into it if Stefan does end him to one at any point during oh, the next okay. turn. Yeah, so I just ran there and yeah, we, we saw it, but he was he was trying to be a bit too fast. He played the super rod for the uh, buzz wall and two fighting energies. And then he just threw off And he hits the head as well, just to top it all uh, off. And he, he plays the super rod to shuffle um, two basic and the buzz wall back into the deck. And then he just throws a beast ring afterwards and then he forgot to shuffle the buzz wall back. And like the farm was like, yeah, this where's this coming from? Your bench is like full and Tord was kind of confused. They tried to be faster. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. Yeah. I was just playing really fast. I'm sorry. Yeah, and this um, is this is also the reason why it can be really important to just not do these like really fast plays and just play clean. But of course with the time limit, um, you get rewarded more than you get punished probably for just trying to play as fast as possible. As fast as possible, yeah. of course. So uh, I don't know whether the time finished right as Tor was about to pass or when he did. It's um, so zero turn now, I think. They it's zero the, turn on Stefan, yeah? I, I think so. So yeah. Tord, plenty of opportunities here to take the last prize that he needs. I think he can seal it up. Looking at his board state, I would feel pretty confident that I can seal it up. We just have to see whether the end for one comes down here on Stefan's side. Uh, obviously, no artillery for Tord. However, you know, four energy and a strong and the buzz on the active. Two on Lycan Rock in the back, being able to Dangerous Rogue and knock out anything on uh, Stefan's side of the board at the minute. Uh, there's no Lucarios out. I think I think Tord may have just clutched it. I mean, the Jake's attack will 
just wrap it up, no matter what uh, Stefan does. D how much HP does... I mean, Lucario has 210. Two, 210, yeah, so usually he would be able to um, withstand the GX attack, but with the anti-prison, yeah. there is no way. So, Torch should have game on board. Um, everything will be able to take the knockout on whatever, basically. And... Stefan still trying to find something just to finish off the game. I don't think he wants to uh, have to scoop here. However, I'm looking at the Mewtwo on the bench, and of course, if it wasn't a situation where Torb was down to just one prize, the Mewtwo could actually be very strong here, being able to uh, attack for those four energy attacks of Buzz. Unfortunately, it's a little, uh, it's too little too late, and uh, Torb just having that Lycan Rock sat there, ready to go, ready to bite into whatever is in front of it. Yeah, so Stefan, he played a supporter, right? He just played Sycamore. So, swing around will definitely deal 120, no matter, so he can't really pass, I suppose. Double puzzle, he does have the enhanced hammer, um, I know that that is a key part in here, he's got the field blower as well. Um, this, is like, this is like watching a movie, because I'm really wondering which win option is open, and I don't see it. I can't see any option apart from knocking out the lichen rock. Yeah, but he, he has no Guzma, right? And he can parallel himself also, uh, getting rid of any of the easy options for Lycan Rock to take out, and just hope that Tord doesn't squeak into the... Yeah, sure, the Jack Attack deals less damage if you parallel yeah, yourself. Yeah, um, I, didn't, I didn't think about that. He squeaks out of the way of the damage of the GX attack, but however, that does leave the very strong Buzzwell still on the bench. Swing around, not needing much to knock out that Mewtwo either. As long as Tord has Guzma, I think but, he's but got Stefan it. But Stefan just gave off the Lucario this turn, so he can use Parallel on himself uh, and tag with the Lucario. And if Tord doesn't have a Guzma, then Stefan can win. So really going down to the wire here, it completely, really I completely down. missed, yeah of course, you can parallel yourself to make Lycan Rock deal less damage and then there's a bigger window um, for Stefan to take the game in a sense, Stop. but of course Torch so just needs the Guzma as well, right? Opted to grab the Guzma from the puzzle, knowing that, okay, so the parallel himself is definitely where he's going, he's getting rid of the two Lele here, uh, leaving that Mewtwo as free game, um, touching the strong, And he moves out, I think. I think they weren't sure if they if you already attached an energy. He hadn't already attached, I definitely oh, know that. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't. Uh, the uh, Mewtwo had the sure. DC on already, there's no other energy on his board, so I would not imagine that uh, that neither of the Lele's discarded by Parallel had energy either. So um, So it is Torn's final towards final turn of the game. Can he get what he needs? It's uh, extra turn one, so he could get another turn afterwards. Um, oh, if, yeah, if, Stefan turn zero, doesn't, if Stefan doesn't win. Started turn zero, because yeah, we course. know he has Guzma in his hand and he can with uh, he can't even <laughs> he can't even knock out with Mewtwo. He does well, it only deals um, one hundred twenty. <laughs> but if he has a double colors energy card, he can still use the Lucara's second attack, I think it is one thirty. Yes, one thirty. Um, oh Tord. Cord attaching an energy the, he doesn't have the guzma and the beast energy goes right over into the lost zone sycamore proving big but what can he have and he has, and he has it and oh he has boy. it wow that is absolutely insane yeah. obviously the strong taking that right the way up with the choice band as well being able to knock